A man lived alone in a wooded area of Washington. His name was Joe, and this is his story. When he was young, he lived on a farm with his parents. One day, while playing in the yard, he heard a car pull into the long, gravel driveway. The familiar sound of the motor informing him, before he even saw, that his grandfather had come to visit. He was at the driveway, waving his arms and yelling excitedly, Grandpa! As the car pulled to a stop, his grandfather had a look of mirth on his face at the welcome he had received. It was always this way, but today would be the day that would change everything. The grandfather got out of the car and, and Joe ran to embrace him. Hey kid, said the grandfather in a rough voice, let's go for a walk. What I failed to mention was that the day previous was Joe's birthday. Joe nodded in agreement, and they set off towards the woods that lay near the edge of the property. Nothing was said until they reached the edge. Now listen here, boy. Now you're ten, and I guess you're old enough to know this. Joe gave a look of surprise, and then inquired, What is it, Grandpa? Did you know I grew up near here? asked the grandfather. Really? Joe looked at his grandfather with full attention, obviously wanting to hear more. Yep, I grew up on the farm that's just opposite us. This little patch of paradise is what separates the two of them. Joe's eyes widened in wonder. The grandfather continued. My kid sister and I used to play in these here trees all the time. There's even a creek a ways in that we used to swim in when it got too hot. That's all gone, though, ever since that day. The grandfather let out a hitched breath, but his face remained the same as usual, unmoved. What do you mean, it's all gone? Listen here, kid, and listen good. I don't ever want to know you went in these woods alone. You got it? The grandfather turned angry. Joe looked at him, fearfully nodding, but now his curiosity was piqued. Now, I don't care if you're old enough to hear this story. I haven't even told your mom about it. Not even now. You're the only one I'll tell it to you, because you're the most like me. The grandfather paused to take a breath, as if the story were a marathon and he was hitting the wall. My pop always told me never to go in these woods alone. Told my sis that, too. For the first while, we listened, being good little kids. But one day, my sis went in them woods and never came out. Joe looked scared. Did she go in alone? Are you stupid, kid? Of course she did. They never found her. Well, not until three weeks later when she was nothing more than a heap of skin and bones and torn clothes. They found her body about three miles downstream. They figured she'd gone too close to the creek and got fell in and drowned. A slight tear crept from the corner of the grandfather's eye, and he wiped it away. The coroner said she'd only been dead about two days, which meant she'd been lost in them woods for about three weeks. That was the weirdest part. How'd she survive that long? It was a week later. My ma and pop went to town to get some groceries, leaving me behind to do a few chores. As soon as they were out of sight, I dropped everything and began to run for those woods, wanting to know more. Curiosity killed the cat, I suppose. Well, I made it to the creek in no time flat. The sun had gone behind a cloud, and that's when I thought I saw my sis standing on the other side of the creek. I rubbed my eyes, and when I looked back, she was still standing there, motioning for me to follow her. Well, I plumb freaked out and ran off. I kept running for about ten straight minutes, and then I slowed. I looked all around, and I didn't know where I was. I started crying, thinking I might end up like my sis. A twig cracked, and I spun around to see my sis standing only a few feet away. Come with me, she said, and so, not knowing anything anymore, I gave up and followed. We followed a path of many twists and turns, but not five minutes later, we were at the edge of the woods. I don't understand. I thought your sister was dead, said Joe. Let me finish. I looked off in the distance and I could see my house, and when I turned back to where she'd been, there was nothing there but a hair ribbon. I picked it up and then ran back to the house, to where my parents were just pulling up. As soon as they got out of the car, I was sobbing and trying to tell them everything that just happened. Go in the house, my pop said to my ma, and then turned to me, looking like he was about to explode. I tried to calm him down, and then I saw he looked like he was about to cry. Then I remembered the hair ribbon, pulled it out of my pocket and showed it to him. My father fell to his knees in the driveway, sobbing the same as when they found my sister's body. I hugged him, and he clung to me like a drowning man grabs a piece of wood to keep his head above the water. 
I now understand why he told me and my sis never to go in those woods alone. It was too easy to get lost. Joe had tears in his eyes at this point, but his grandfather remained stone-faced as he finished telling his story. Come on, quit crying. It's just a story, said the grandfather. Let's go back to the house, and I'll give you your birthday present. Joe and his grandfather turned and made their way back to the house, Joe calming down ever so slowly. When they arrived, Joe's mom was out on the porch to greet them. Hey, come in and eat some lunch. Joe smiled and entered, his, grand following, his grandfather following slower. Joe sat at home, bored. His parents were off to work, leaving him all alone. It was a week after his grandfather had come to visit. The phone in the kitchen rang, and Joe went to answer it. Hello? It was Joe's grandmother on the other line. Joe, how are you? She sounded off. I'm good, Grandma. What's wrong? Well, are your parents around? No, they went to work about 20 minutes ago. Really? What's wrong? You can tell me. His grandmother hesitated, and then sounded as if she were holding back tears. Your grandfather left us last night. Where did he go? asked Joe, wondering why his grandfather would just up and leave. He went to heaven. He died, Joe. Joe slammed the phone back on the base and ran to the living room, tears beginning. He lay on the couch crying for half an hour, and then something in him snapped. He was in a frail state after learning the news, but the curiosity of his grandfather's story came back, and so he decided to see if it was just a story. He rationalized that his grandfather would never find out, given the way he was now. Joe packed a bag with water in his present, a compass given to him by his grandfather just a week earlier. He set out, following the same route to the woods. He took a deep breath and entered, being engulfed by shadows cast from the thick trees. Joe emerged in a clearing, a creek running through the middle. He pulled out his compass to check which way he was headed. His grandfather had taught him how to use the compass, and he got pretty good with it. The needle wouldn't stay in the same place, though. Joe grew confused and tapped on the glass. The needle wouldn't still. He closed it and looked up, and that's when he thought he could see the form of a little girl standing just behind a tree across the creek. She seemed to be talking with someone behind the tree. She then turned back to Joe and said, Follow me. Joe stood frightened. He started across the creek, and when he reached the other side, he saw that the little girl was nowhere in sight. He glanced around, wondering if this was just his imagination. He then heard a familiar voice. Damn it, Jan. You should have just let him find his way out on his own. But... Uh, okay, I guess he is a bit rattled. Alright, go ahead and show yourself again. The little girl appeared a ways ahead, this time with a taller figure standing at her side. The taller figure was wearing a hat. The same hat Joe's grandfather wore constantly. G g grandpa Joe hesitantly called. Stupid kid. I told you not to come in here alone. Now we gotta get you home. Just follow Jan here. I have to get back, Joe's grandfather said, and then disappeared. Jan beckoned again, and so Joe followed. They emerged at the edge of the woods twenty minutes later. Joe looked around, seeing that Jan had disappeared into thin air. He ran back to his house and up to his room, where he cried again. Was it all a dream, he wondered? His parents got home around six, and Joe ran to them, crying. Grandpa's dead, he sobbed. His mother looked at his father and gave a look of, give us a sec. She knelt down so her gaze was level with Joe's. Joe, honey, your grandpa's been dead for years. Don't you remember? The look of concern in her eyes was deep. Ha, though. Grandma called earlier and told me. The look of concern evaporated and was replaced with irritation. What's your game, Joe? Your grandma's been dead even longer. You wouldn't even remember her. You know what? Go to your room. You're grounded. I don't want to hear another word of this. Understand? Now scat! Joe looked, in Joe looked incredulously at his mother, and after a moment of consideration, he realized she was serious, and so he sullenly mounted the stairs and went to his room, dejected. Throughout the years, Joe's memories of his grandfather faded, and didn't return until his parents died, leaving him the house and the farm. He still lives in that house today, and regularly goes on walks in the woods. One day, he vanished, never to be seen again. The search party that was sent in after him found nothing except an old tarnished hat, a hair ribbon, and a battered compass.